Last summer, in the weeks following George Floyd's murder, members of Congress pr promised fundamental changes to policing. It was not long before a bill in George Floyd's name was passed in the House along party lines. It never advanced to the Senate, where Republicans offered a, a counter bill, watered down version of the bill instead. Now, at the time, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker called the bill, quote, woefully inadequate, deeply flawed, and painfully weak. When it comes to policing reform, Senator Booker may have a closer handle on this than any other senator, ex experientially at least. Not only is he one of the drafters of the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, he was mayor of Newark, New Jersey in 2011 when the Justice Department sent him a letter announcing a patterns of practice investigation into a city's police department. By the time Newark and the DOJ entered a settlement announcing mutually agreed upon reforms in May 2016, Booker was in the Senate. Since then, he's made a number of proposals to reform criminal justice, including one that was signed into law by Donald Trump in 2018. And joining me now is Senator Cory Booker, a Democrat from New Jersey. I wonder first, uh, Senator, if you can if you can give viewers we we're talking about the George Floyd uh, Policing Act. We have talked about some of its provisions. We refer to as reform. What would it do? What's the what's the sort of succinct version to people about what it would do and how it applies to, to the, the problems uh, folks experience of policing at the ground level. Yeah, well, I'm glad you brought this up. I'm a I'm a former mayor with a majority black city, majority black city council, black mayor, and we were doing innovative reforms. Some of which made a big difference, but the Justice Department scraped our data and showed us that we had severe challenges and problems, and we went about changing them and, and even further with the ACLU. But this goes to show you this isn't about good intentions. This isn't about overt. Uh, uh, racism. This is about systems uh, that are desperately needed, uh, desperately need change. And the best way I know about doing them is creating real accountability. And accountability in the George Floyd Act has, number one, a lot more transparency. That data that was scraped by the Justice Department in my city, we want to pull that data from every police department to hmm. begin reporting from uses of force to even the racial, uh, uh, racial breakdown of their traffic stops and more. In addition to that, uh, we want to ban certain practices that has led to the death of people like Eric Garner or Breonna Taylor, specifically those kind of no-knock warrants and those kind of chokeholds. On top of that, we want to create greater liability. When you violate someone's civil rights, when you violate our law, we want to see real accountability. And that means taking on things like qualified immunity, which are shielding cities uh, uh, and, and, and officers uh, from that. So there's a lot in our bill uh, that would go a long way in shifting American police accountability. And that's what we're really pressing for. You know, I've heard this argument from, you know, sometimes I've heard this argument from folks I think who are advancing it cynically, but I've heard it non-cynically, a lot from police officers, police officers who I think are probably good cops, um, good police officers, good at what they do and care about it, that something like, for instance, getting rid of the qualified immunity protections, which is um, something the Supreme Court has kind of built up through its jurisprudence to make it essentially an impenetrable shield for, you know, misbehavior on the job, uh, that, that that would put police officers in a defensive crouch. It'll make them less proactive and you will get worse policing. What's your what's your argument in, in response to that? That's just that's not my belief. I don't share that belief whatsoever. Um, I really do believe that you, you have to in any profession know that if you grossly violate laws and civil rights, that there's consequences for that. We've seen the kind of impunity that has led to a lot of folks' death, as if these bad officers, the bad apples, do not think there'll be consequences when they do these horrific things. And so I, 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 I am trying my best. I'm in the midst of some deep talks uh, to get to a place where we don't solve all the problems. I think policing reform is going to take a lot more, but where we can say to America, we have created more accountability, more transparency, change standards. And, and are to take a, a big stride towards making Americans safer. Uh, uh, and, and the police profession, which is hurting right now, it is hurting. And in, in my state, for example, the headline just read that uh, we have a historic low in applications for our state police. Uh, we need to heal uh, uh, police community relations and trust in, in law enforcement. And so there's a lot we have work we have to do, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I think we can. This is the moment to make some strides towards a greater justice in our country. Uh, Karen Bass, who is one of the co-authors of this legislation on the House side, uh, was on Joy Reid's program in the last hour talking about feeling that there's some prospects here. I think there's some informal conversations with having with Tim Scott, who is the, the author and sponsor of that sort of uh, 
alternative bill that was floated the last time around. Um, is there an actual bipartisan consensus majority piece of legislation? To act? Is that a possibility in, 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 in the next short term? It's, it's most certainly a possibility. Uh, Tim and I are friends. We've done big bills together um, before, and uh, he is a good faith actor, and we are in conversations, and I have some confidence that we can get something done. The question is, will it be enough so that we can say it's real reform, real change? Because I've seen things before, from racial sensitivity training uh, to community policing funding, and it has not led to a stop of the deaths of people like uh, Tamir Rice, uh, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Eric Gardner, and the names that we all know. So, I, so my standard is: Are we making are we are we making real substantive reforms uh, that we can say are really going to make a difference in accountability in our country? And so, I'm encouraged by the conversations right now, um, and I'm I'm hard at work. This has been the center of my efforts for uh, uh, um, many days now uh, to try to get something delivered uh, to the president's desk. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.